suggest that, but uh, if you feel brave enough, why not? <laughs> Hey guys, so I know it's a bit of an unusual environment from my usual scene for the videos, but as you might have guessed it uh, from the data science on your phone video, I like to be outside quite a bit. And this is my balcony and I do most of my work here. So what I wanted to talk about today is Google Collaboratory and there's a reason for that. I did a little sequel of tutorials, a course, if you may, on how to do text classification. It goes from logistic regression to fine-tuning a BERT model. And I thought to myself, well, if you are someone starting out in data science, uh, you not only need the code to actually run the trainings and look into how it's built, but you also need an environment to do that and if you don't have a GPU, and even if you do, uh, setting up the environment in the beginning of learning is quite a challenge for a newcomer. And Google Colab is something that solves that. And solves that in an easy way that is a Jupyter notebook server, which is running on Google Cloud. And uh, you can access it at any time from anywhere if you have a Gmail account with Google Drive attached to it. So what you see here is one of those notebooks that I was talking about. And let's see if it finished training. It is! Great! So, as I said, it's essentially a Jupyter notebook server running on Google Cloud which you have access to. You just create a notebook in your Google Drive, then you open it up and bam, you're connected to a running Jupyter notebook. They do have GPUs to which you can connect for your training needs. And they have TPUs, which is pretty much the same, just answer processing unit instead of graphical processing unit. And uh, you can run it without a GPU if you're just doing some data analysis, maybe, you know, looking into distribution of the classes and whatnot. If you want to create a notebook, all you need is just to have a Gmail account with a Google Drive attached to it. As you can see here is my Google Drive. And then you just click new as you would create any Google document. Go to more. And here you should see Google Collaboratory, but if you don't, then just click Connect More Apps. Wait for it to load, of course. Type Collaboratory in Search, install it to your Google Drive, and then you will be able to create one. So again, new, more, Google Collaboratory. And bam, you have your notebook. Here you can rename it as with all Google Documents. You... Oops. Here's a little menu. Uh, this one is for table of contents. So if you, let's say, add text with, uh, with the headline, header, the header, it's called model will show up here and you can go to it. Uh, this lets you search and replace things in your notebook. These are some snippets that you can Google for. And this is your files. So for files to work you actually need to connect to the runtime. So let's delete this. So let's import pandas for starters. And let's say I want to read a data file in my drive. So I can just copy that from this notebook. And now if I'll try to read it, it will give me an error, but there's no such file or directory. And this is because you need to connect to your Google Drive. And there's a button for that. Here. Yeah. So just click it, you get a pop-up 
asking if you want to connect, connect to it. And then when it's connected, you'll see a new directory here called drive. You can get into it. And let's just uh, see how you would go about getting the path of the file. My drives, it's not my only drive. So this one's quite clean, but my other drives are quite a mess. So what I suggest is just finding the file here and copying the path and then just pasting it here. It's much easier. Easier to do it like that than to try and uh, decipher your drive. So now we run it and it should read the file. We can just print out the head of it. Cool. So yeah, uh, we can do pretty much anything you want here. Most packages that you would use for uh, data science assignments or tasks are already installed, but if you seem to find that you're missing a package or two, you can always install it. Just uh, use exclamation mark and install anything you want. That's in our plan. And it will install it. So, yeah, this is how easy, easy it is to start running a notebook. Uh, it will be automatically saved, but you can click Ctrl S to save it, uh, just to, you know, be safe. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's how you create a notebook. If you want to check if you're running on a GPU or TPU or nothing, you just go to runtime, change runtime type, and you'll see Here's a selection, and you can go with none, GPU, GPU, click GPU, you will get this notification that to get most out of Colab, you shouldn't use GPU excessively. Yeah, so when I got banned, I did, <laughs> and then I didn't have any GPUs left. You click save, it will just uh, reconnect to a different VM and then you can run your code on a GPU. So why is it so great? Well, there's a free tier to it and essentially the free tier is the main tier. All the resources that I just listed for you are accessible for free as long as you don't exceed some limits. So the main limit here is 12 hours of uh, virtual machine lifetime. So if you're running a model and it will run for more than, than 12 hours, at some point it will just disconnect you and that's it. So just keep in mind that when you're training something big and save your checkpoint, the GPUs we provide will have up to 8 gigs of RAM. The memory on the virtual machine itself will be around 13 gigs of RAM. And as long as you don't overuse it, you shouldn't be soft banned from using GPUs. In my case, I was by the seaside for a week and I needed to train some models and I was on Google Colab each day for seven to eight hours training models, testing it, using multiple notebooks to do multiple iterations of the model. And at some point I got uh, banned from using GPUs. I, I didn't get a message that you're banned or something, but if I selected to use GPU for my runtime, it just wouldn't be accessible to me because, well, I just overused my free tier. There's no stated limit for how much you can use it and uh, Sometimes it's hard to predict, so just keep in mind that there's no guarantee that you will always be able to access a GPU. And uh, take that into account when training your models. Don't uh, don't train big models on here. Is there a way to go around it? Uh, yeah, there's Colab Pro for 999 a month. You get faster GPUs from 8 gigabytes of RAM. On the free tier, you get 16 longer runtimes instead of 12 hours, 24, and more memory instead of 13 gigs of RAM, I think you get 26, around double. But there's a catch with it, Colab Pro is av available only from US and Canada, and you could say, well, 
I'll use a VPN, but they specifically state in their terms and conditions that if you pretend to be from US, uh, you might get banned from using Google Colab, so I wouldn't suggest that, but uh, if you feel brave enough, why not? Careful. Right, so we're going to be a sneaky beaver and get into this window. Oh, hello. You surprised me, didn't you, you little fuck? And the other thing is that resources still are not guaranteed in Collab Pro. So yes, you will uh, get uh, first access to the resource if it's available, but even though you can be in the station where you start up your notebook and the notebook doesn't have any GPU attached to it and you can't really select to use a GPU or TPU for it. So just keep that in mind. Once again, you should be able to use it on free tier enough to do small training sessions. As I said, uh, for my usage, apart from that one time when I totally overused the free tier, I never had too many issues with not getting a GPU. Most of the time, whenever I try to run something on Google Colab, I have a GPU available. So that's about it. I just wanted to introduce you guys to Google Collaboratory for the upcoming videos because we are going to use it to do text classification and yeah if you liked the video click the like button click subscribe bell notifications all and see you see you in the next video bye